Hi, my name's Paul Grogan, and in this Gaming Rules Quick and Dirty Review, I'm going to tell you what I think about Cavern Tavern. Now, an interesting story about this game. I was at Essen 2017, and I think it was day one, and I was wandering around the halls with a friend of mine, and he said, oh, have you played Cavern Tavern? And I said, no, I've, I've not heard of it. And that's no disrespect to the game. There's 800 new games that come out every year, and I'm not able to keep track of all of them. Um, and he said, oh, you should try it. It's quite good. And I thought, oh, OK. And, you know, put the game name to the back of my mind. Anyway, the next day, the designer came over to me. He found, he sought me out at Essen, and he went, oh, I'd like to have a copy of my game. And it was Cavern Tavern. So this is the game which I was given a review copy of. So I thought I'd better do a review of it now. I have only played this game once, and that was with four players, and you might think, well, why is he doing a review of a game that he's only played once? Surely he should play it ten times with all player counts in order to give, you know, a fully accurate review. Well, after playing it once, it's unlikely I'm going to play it again. But don't switch off the video camera just yet, because that doesn't mean this is going to be a negative review. What it does mean is, well, I'll tell you the story. I played this game at Gridcom, which is a convention that I run at my house about a month after Essen, and we go through all of the new games that we brought back from Essen, except um, brought back so many games from Essen, I wasn't able to get through all of them. But that weekend, I probably played about, I don't know, 12, 15 new games, and all but two of them were fantastic. I mean, I absolutely loved playing them, wanted to play them again straight away, and this was one of the ones which wasn't fantastic. So that means, with so many games to choose from, that it's unlikely that I'm going to go back to this one again when there's so many other games that I, I thought were better. That's not to say this is a bad game, it's just to say that it didn't particularly suit me and my playing group. However, let's delve into what I thought about it. First of all, the good things about it, there's lots of good things about it. Um, the board's quite nice, the artwork is quite nice on the board, um, and it's all very clear. They've put a lot of effort into, I think, the graphic design, and a lot of things are very clear. The actual gameplay, I, I quite like the gameplay. I think it would be a little long with six players. As I say, we played it with four. But the, the theme and setting of the game, I think, actually quite works. And at the end of the day, you're rolling dice, you're placing those dice on the board, which will get you resources, and then you use those resources to get points, which has been seen in a million other games. But in this game, the theme really fits, because what you're doing is you're actually going to the mess hall and you're picking up one of these orders, which represents somebody's gone to the bar and they've ordered some drinks, although drinks in this case tend seem to be herbs and rocks and whatever, but anyway, they've placed an order at the bar and you've then got to deliver that order. But the longer you take to deliver that order, the less points you get. And that is something that I find quite thematic. The other bit I like about it is the actual dice placement mechanic for collecting your resources. So you will roll your four dice at the start of the turn and then you'll use those dice on the various spaces on the board to collect the resources. Now, you'll see the numbers on the board here. This is what you need to roll exactly in order to use that space. And you can add your dice together. So, for example, if I wanted to go here to make lunch for Nasty, who's, who's the evil boss, I'd need to use a 7. So you use a 5 and a 2 together, put them on there, and you can use that space. So, that works out quite nice. However, now, we came up with a house rule after our first game. Um, if we ever played it again, we'd possibly use this rule. But the low numbers, the ones and twos, they're really hard to get. Because if you don't roll a one, so say I've rolled a two, three, five, and a five, then great, I can get a two, I can get a three, I can't get the four, I can get the five, I can get the seven, etc., etc. from adding your cards up. But you can't get the low numbers. And in, in particular situations where you really, really need a, a one, for example, um, and you don't roll a one, then, then you can't get it. Now, saying that, another thing I like about the game is there are multiple ways to get certain resources. So let's say fruit or herbs. Let's say I don't roll a one, I can't get fruit or herbs. But if you look down here, this space, which needs a seven, is herbs. So I didn't roll a one, but I did roll a seven. Bang, go there, get the herbs. What if I needed the fruit? Well, over here is the fruit space, which is an eight. And I could use the five and the three to get an eight. So the house rule that I'm going to mention is probably not needed, but we felt that in the game, because you can add your dice together, it might also be nice that you can subtract them. So I could use the three and the two, for example. I could take the, the two off the three and get a one. Go here, get the fruit or the herbs. So anyway, there are multiple ways to get the resources you need, and that is quite a good thing. 
So speaking of the dice rolls, there is an expansion set included in the game itself. Now, the first time we played it, I'm a big believer in playing the game without any expansion first off. Um, and having read the expansion now, perhaps we should have used it for our first game because the expansion allows you to get these, uh, these die modifier tokens that will allow you to modify your dice. So if you are more of a Euro gamer like me, then have a look at that expansion that's included and, and, uh, and, and I would recommend using that. Another thing I quite like about the game is uh, the game takes place over this many rounds and it's a clock, which is which is thematic. You know, that's nice. You're in a pub and there's a clock and every round you move it on to the next one. It's a little bit weird that it starts at 10 p.m. and goes through to 1 a.m. But whatever, you know, it's a nice idea that they've included this clock with a little hand in it. So there's a lot of nice things about the components in it. I did feel that the cards, they could have been a little bit thicker. They, they weren't particularly that thick, but again, perfectly functional. And there, there are lots of cards in the game and the tokens are really good. The board's really solid. It's really, really good thickness. The box is solid. The only thing is that the player boards, they were the, they were the little sort of a bit flimsy. Um, there are six of them, which is why they probably didn't go to, to card for them. But yeah, pretty much components, generally really good. Rule book. Now, I'll be honest with you. The first time we went to play this game that weekend, I looked at the rule book and went, Oh my god, this is this is huge. It's like 20 something pages. Do we have page numbers? Interesting. No, we don't have page numbers. Okay, so you should always have page numbers in rule books. But anyway, it's a big rule book. And we sat down and we were all gonna learn from the rule book and we thought, oh okay, no, 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 no. It's it's obviously too complicated. We'll do it another time when we're a bit more awake. And then the next day I sat down and thought, no, 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 let let's do it. It's the afternoon, let's do it. And as we're reading through the rule book, um, I don't normally say this, but the rule book doesn't need to be this big. I'm all for clarity um, and everything else. And it is really clear. The proofreading is really good. Um, it was pretty well structured. I only had some minor issues um, with it, but generally speaking, it was pretty clear. And in some places it spelled things out. I'm not, I don't really want to say too much, but the size of the rule book did initially give us an impression that it was more complicated than it is. And there's quite a lot of white space on a lot of the pages, like this one here. You, you can see that there's big white space there. So the rule book could have probably been four pages shorter. Should it have been for the lack of, to, to lose clarity? No, absolutely. So yeah, rule book was, we, we thought was generally okay. However, there's lots of FAQ that have been published online about the rule book. Um, so clearly it wasn't as clear as, as we first thought. There were a few questions that cropped up during the game. And I'm a big believer that those questions they would have cropped up during the playtests of the game, and therefore the answers to them should be written in the rulebook. A rulebook shouldn't just be the rules of a game, it should be the rules of the game and all of the questions that cropped up in playtesting. Uh, there's also cards with various bits of text on, and there is a page online of card clarifications. And again, I think that's something that shouldn't really be needed. You shouldn't need to go online and download an extra section of card clarifications. Those card clarifications, again, those are questions that would have cropped up during playtesting and they should have really been included in the rules. So anyway, as I say, generally okay, you know, I've seen a lot worse. One of the things that we didn't like about the game, and I say, I say we didn't like about the game, I was actually okay with this bit, but some of my friends who played it weren't keen on that, is that there's a take that element in the game, but I don't, I don't think there really is. You see, one of the things that I like about the game is thematically you have this track here, and this tracks how much you are in trouble with the boss. And, and as it goes down, if it hits space three, you draw one of these nasty cards, right? And it gives you, you're in trouble with the boss and you've got to do something. Now, sometimes this is just a, uh, a one-off effect and you lose something or whatever. Um, one of the cards is actually, oh, okay, we'll, we'll let you off. You're not really in trouble. Uh, but another one is like, right, unless, until you get me these resources, um, you can't do anything else. And one of our players in our game, Adam, poor Adam, he got, he got a card that was basically right. Unless you can do this, this and this, I'm not going to let you do anything else until you've given me this thing. And then for the next two rounds, he wasn't able to roll the dice to get those things. So basically he lost two or three rounds of the game. And that, that's, not, that's not nice. Anyway, I'll come back to the take that element. That bit I quite like. You know, it's very thematic. You do things wrong. This track goes down. You get in trouble with the boss and you draw a card and you get some kind of penalty. I, I don't like the fact that one of the cards is 
absolutely no effect whatsoever and another one actually really hurts you. Um, so that, that's a little bit of a balance issue for the hardcore Euro gamers. But one of the things you can do in the game, and I like this as well, this is quite thematic, you can go to this space and you can say to the boss, it wasn't me, Gov, it was him. And what it does is it moves your marker up on your track, which is, is good because that track will lose you points at the end of the game. And obviously when it reaches here, here or here, you'll, you'll take a nasty card. But whenever you move the card up, you move somebody else's down. Now, the reason I'm saying I don't think that is a a full take that in there is you're not deliberately doing something to hurt somebody else. You are doing something to benefit you and also as a side effect it hurts somebody else. And ideally if the players are good they'll be picking on the person who seems to be doing quite well. So I, I, I didn't mind it so much and it, and it is quite thematic and it does add to the fun of the game. But some people wouldn't like it because you know they feel that you're picking on somebody and you know directly hurting them. Other things I like about the game, this player reference card, it's really simple, but what it does is it is it shows you the numbers that you need to get that particular resource. So to get a herb, you need to roll either a one or a seven. They are the two spaces on the board in which you can get herbs. So this is a really useful little player aid, a really nice addition to the game. So that about wraps things up for this review. As I say, there's a lot to like about this game and for a company's first game on, on Kickstarter, then I, you know they did a really good job with it. I said they, the only problem we had with it is some people didn't like the take that element, the nasty cards felt a little bit too random and it was up against so many other games that we really, really enjoyed playing that weekend. So it wasn't really a fair outing for it. I would play it again in the right situation. I would definitely use the expansion set but as I say, when it's up against so many other great games in my collection, it, it does mean that this has less chance of getting played than others. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks very much to the publisher for getting me a review copy of this game. And until next time, take care and thanks for watching.